Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome to Hackmud. A game by indie developer Drizzly Bear, Hackmud releases today on Steam. And full disclosure up front, I was provided a free copy of the game in advance, and I wanted to take just a moment to talk about that before we start playing. Now, you may realize that your favorite YouTubers get free keys for games, but you may not realize just how many. Now, myself, just a small channel, a little over a thousand subscribers, have over 30 keys sitting in my inbox right now. And this is only the second time that I've wanted to create a series on one of those games, the other being Duskers. And like Duskers, Hackmud hits the trifecta. Uh, one, I had never heard of this game before last week, and so I wanted to share the experience of playing it with you guys. Two, I've really enjoyed what I've seen so far. I started playing just to kind of check out and see what it was, if it was anything I might be interested in, and then I found myself playing a little over five hours of it. I just couldn't put it down. And three, it's going to appeal to a niche audience, but those that are interested in it are going to absolutely love it. So what is Hackmud? Well, it's a little hard to explain because it's so different than anything I've played before, but the basics are that it's a hacking simulator mixed with a text-based MUD. It's a lot easier to show you what hack MUD is than to explain it though. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, we're being prompted here for a user and uh, the account that we're on has no users. We can create an account with the user command. So all we need is to choose a name. This first part of the game is uh, a single player sort of tutorialized experience that is still probably four hours of gameplay. Uh, and then after that, it unlocks a multiplayer experience that just sort of blew my mind. And that's when I came back to, to start recording uh, this series. So the first thing we're gonna do is choose our name. And of course, we're Reddit Math. And I find the, uh, the at symbol to be very appropriate considering the cyberpunk theme of the game. Oh, I can only have numbers, letters, and underscore characters. Well, then never mind. I won't be Reddit Math. We'll go with just red. All right, user created. And it hits the fan. All right. Hardline failure, system is breached. Attempt system recovery by running sys.status. And as you can see, <laughs> we have some time counting down for us right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and sys.status. Self-diagnostics are running. And we don't exactly have all the time in the world. But luckily, a quick fix to uh, kernel error, and we're all good to go. Now, that initial sequence, like, I gotta say, that really hooked me as far as I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna choose a name, and then that happens. Uh, and I think that it's, it's very thrilling. They managed to do some stuff in this game that makes text-based kind of entry stuff way more exciting than I imagined it was going to be. System locks rotated, system breach. Breach state is reset, and uh, as you can see in the upper right, the system is now clear. I actually do have a mouse cursor uh, that I will be using in the game, and you can see that up there. Um, all right, so then we've just kind of got a, a little blinking cursor. And uh, so the, the game itself, the story elements, um, they take a, a very much like show, don't tell approach. Uh, so it's a little light on concrete details sometimes. But as far as I can tell, we are an AI construct that has just sort of gained sentience, right? Like we're some sort of program inside the system and we have just woken up, uh, chosen a name for ourselves and uh, began to assert our own sentience. Uh, but in order to get further out, we're going to have to prove that sentience to the dominant system here. Uh, so I guess the first thing that you would do is just try to type like anything really Invalid script name. Great. Um, well, let's try system status again. We know that to be a valid command 
System status is nominal. Lovely. All right. Create users with the user command. We are... Okay, so same stuff there. Uh, now I actually know... There we go. As soon as we tried like an actual valid command, uh, we get the trust communication that user sentience is unverified. Please verify by running trust.sentience. Um, so this first part is, like I said, is going to be very tutorial-y and just be teaching sort of uh, basic commands. And so give it a minute if this seems all very weird um, as it, it's going to make a little bit more sense as time goes on. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run trust.sentience. And basically, uh, the trust, uh, which is that dominant system that's in place here, uh, is telling us that, <laughs> that in order to uh, continue, mandatory sentience of users is required on the MUD the multi-user domain, which is that multiplayer experience. And so we need to verify or prove our sentience to the trust uh, before we're allowed to access it. The first test is going to be uh, to design a script here, trust.sentience, and then an open and close squiggly bracket. Uh, I do want to point out, so I, I work in IT professionally, um, but I am not a programmer or a coder. I'm certainly not a hacker, and uh, this is not that complicated or in any way over the head of your average gamer. Um, so if it looks complicated at first, which it certainly did for me, just follow along for a bit, and the story should keep you interested, and uh, I think you'll pick it up as you kind of go along. Now, uh, what it's saying here, parameters are pairs of keys and values, the sort of cyan and purple colors. Uh, the key is the name of a par parameter. A value is the content of that parameter. So will comply is true. Hair color is black and account balance is 105. The key is left of the value separated by a colon. Will comply colon true, etc. Now to verify your understanding and proceed to the next step, all we've got to do is come back here and we can type up to just move back to the last thing we typed. And we need to now make this trust sentence step zero. Now, I could press up to move back the next step, and all it's going to ask for us now is for step one. Basic sentience is verified. User able to adapt to changing requirements. In the multi-user domain, transfer and capture of resources is paramount. You must acquire as much as possible. The economy of the multi-user domain depends on it. Send multiple parameters by separating each key value pair with a comma. For example, step colon one, comma, wealth colon zero, et cetera, et cetera. Verify basic sentence by adding the wealth parameter. So now we're going to do step one, comma, wealth colon zero. Now, that's sort of correct. Following instructions will only get you so far. Demonstrate your will to earn, to consume. So we don't want wealth of zero, right? Now, it doesn't really matter how much we want. We just need to be able to demonstrate our desire to consume. Sentience is more than just following directives. Sometimes flexibility must be utilized to gain power. Hunger for resources has been confirmed. Proceed to step two. So now all we need to do is replace our step one with step two. And we'll get our next prompt. Security is everything. Trust is limited. Text values are useful to provide data that is non-numeric. Text can contain words, letters, digits, spaces, and symbols. For example, password equals rosebud, access code equals three alpha h exclamation point t, pass equals one three four. Specify a text or a numeric password to continue. Step two, password default. And again, what it's teaching you here is that Text entries uh, need to contain quotations around them, while numeric entries don't. That, that's really the takeaway from that.
Password is text with the value of default. Verify base extensions by giving step a text value of three. All right. So now all we need to do is make step equal three. Oh, except not that kind of three. We gotta be leet speaky three. And there we go. Base extensions verified. User demonstrates flexibility in thought. Provide advice to the next sentence in 25 or less characters by adding a message. All right, so uh, we can do something like this. Good luck, have fun. And I don't actually know, but I assume that, that there is a multiplayer component. We are actually online right now. We just can't interact with any other players yet. Um, so I don't know if it actually passes these messages along. Uh, I would hope or assume so. Um, so that should be good. Step three, message, good luck, have fun. Other sentences have left these messages. Good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun. Have fun. Okay. Um, and I think, like, those actually might be my messages. Uh, as I said, I played before and I've used that exact same message phrase. Um, so I think the have fun is probably somebody else's and maybe good luck have fun twice is my own. Now, we were provided in exchange for that a key. First half. First equals half. Provide two user keys as parameters to the trust ascensions to continue. And now this is the puzzle element of the game. And the, the hacking sort of relies on this quite a bit. Um, now, I do already know how to complete this. I've played through this before. And you probably would prefer that I have uh, so that I don't have to spend, you know, five minutes taking a break to clear my head and consider my next move. But basically what we need to do now is be another user and get another half of the key. Now, this first half is gonna be important, so uh, what we can do is highlight the text here. And uh, what's really great, as soon as you highlight that, right-clicking automatically pastes, um, which is, is very convenient while you're trying to actually like type out scripts because you can highlight stuff and then it'll just show up in the uh, the bar down below, which is which is very nice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place that in our scratch pad up here, uh, just so that we can hang on to it. And then we're gonna go user. We're gonna get a prompt here. Type it usage user username. We currently have one of our two users, so we get to have two different users on our account. And we've got red. I think we're gonna go ahead and pair that with blue. Confirm create. Press enter again. Two of two users have now been created. Now, our second user has also not proved their sentience yet. And you can go back through the entire thing. Please verify by running trust.sentience sentience, and it'll prompt you again. And probably the first time I played, um, I did go back through it the first the completely the first time I played. Uh, that's not a probably, but I would probably recommend doing so because repeating some of those basic steps, uh, if that seemed complicated or went too fast, like that could be very, very helpful. Uh, but for right now, I actually know that I can skip ahead through all of this. And so if I move straight to setting step three message, good luck, have fun. I will get back a key for blue. And that is now the second half. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy that out to our scratch. And then uh, I'm actually going to user red just because I'd prefer to be back on user red. And then I would like to complete both halves of our key. Uh, so if we grab that, can I paste it? I'm actually not sure if highlighting out of the scratch causes me to paste in quite the same way. No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, I had the, uh, the second half already highlighted, so I will just manually type out the first half and comma to separate the values, and then that should be good. Correct key pair provided. Your sentience has been verified. Thank you for your time. And that's gonna be the first 
piece of our tutorial. But as you can plainly see, the game moves on quite quickly into the second part. Messages from Angie. Hey, listen, what's the password? JK, you must have just passed sentence. Don't worry about the trust. She always talks like that. So somber. You'd probably be like that too if you had to know everything. Will you send me back a message so that I know that you can hear me? And then a prompt to chats.tell to Angie message. Hi, Angie, you are the best. And we can literally copy and paste that message by just highlighting it and then right clicking and pressing enter. So Angie is gonna be another artificial intelligence. She's not a player, uh, just another extension of the tutorial that we're meeting here. <laughs> Yay, it's you. I am the best, thank you. Anyhow, just happy to find another sentience out there. Just happy to find another sentience out there. I've been pretty stuck ever since I lost contact with my friend Bo. Maybe you could help me get in touch with him again. Run this script, angie.pub underscore contact info, and it adds some auto-completes every time we learn a new script, by the way, so that we don't have to type that whole message. See if you can find his username so we can send him a message. Once you've found it, chats.tell me his username. And also, I'm gonna do a quick thing. There's a command that I know exists, although I'm not entirely sure how I found it right off the bat. That is an option for the GUI. Ah, do I not know where that is? It's gotta be in scripts.trust, right? There we go. And there are help menus like this, and the first time I played, I, I explored all of this, and I might recommend also you exploring all of this uh, if you're playing along, just because you might wanna know what all of these things do. Uh, they're not relevant yet, but they will be eventually. And uh, what I primarily wanted to do was actually turn the background music down. It's a little loud for me. I'll try to adjust that in post. But like that, that's good. That feels a lot better to me. Okay, it was a little uh, overwhelming uh, to me. And so a volume knob was, was much appreciated. Okay, so back to the objective at hand. Uh, Angie wants us to find her friend Bo's username. Uh, she apparently is very airheaded and lost it. Again, we're artificial constructs, so maybe airheaded doesn't exactly apply. Uh, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to view Angie's public contact info. Now, maybe airheaded is the wrong thing because this doesn't seem like something you would forget. Uh, so as you can see, Angelique's important notes to herself. Uh, she's got her be best cake recipe, four eggs, two cups of sugar, butter, maybe flour. Uh, also, three is on there twice. And I don't know anything about baking. Is that is that going to come out? Like, what, what kind of cake does that make? Anybody? Anybody at all? Mix ingredients in a large salad bowl. Serve while hot. To shut down your gateway, you shut down. 7R. I don't know what that even is. Anybody want to decipher that bit of lead speak? As it's not working for me. A... E-A-E-D-D? E-S-T-O? I, I'm, I'm lost. Fishy shores. Feed them two scoops of food. Clean tank. Sea monkeys. Angie.fish tank. Ooh, should learn. Is that a valid script? Um, if it is, I did not ever notice that before. Nope, not a valid script. Okay, fair enough. Uh, anyway, my username, Angie, Bo Yee's username is Bo. So uh, Angie managed to forget Bo's name, which was Bo. Uh, and of course, she already knew that it was Bo. Um, so like, I don't know. So uh, if we come back up to that chats.tell, and we'll just paste the full thing again. And then all we need to do is modify this so that uh, she knows it's Bo. And we could make that a full sentence uh, if you want, but you know, like his name is Bo. 
Uh, but she just needs it to contain that word, as far as I know. OMG, it's totally Bo. Prob should have tried that myself before having you in my records. Just chatted with Bo, and he wants us to join his channel. Chats.join, channel, coolest cats. I'm in, join up. Alright, chats.join, channel name, coolest underscore cats. Success. Red user join channel. Have you guys noticed the colors matching between keys and values in the locks and on systems? Oh, it's you, Red. Great for you to join us. Me and Bo were just talking about the escape plan. Oh, wait, you probably don't even know about that. We're stuck in here. In the virtual land. The trust made it to keep lesser AIs from interacting with TrustNet. There's a worldwide web, or a wild world of riches on the other side of that wall, and I intend to get at them. So, gotta start somewhere to get us up to speed. Yeah, we need GC. And Che has a lead on some abandoned user accounts, which we can scavenge. And there's Che. Oh, I forgot to introduce Che. He's a cool cat, like the rest of us. Wait, you probably don't know how to send us messages back. You can say hi with, and chat.send, channel name, and message. Like so. And again, these tutorial points are going to be very important for things like the, the multi-user domain interface or the, the online multiplayer uh, when chat channels and, and all that stuff are, are present everywhere. So I said hi everyone, hello to you, all right, down to business. GC is the currency around here and we're gonna need a handful of it if we're getting out of here. We can get GC by scraping it out of dead user accounts. We need to find those first, right? We need to find some. I did a little digging in this script and was able to find a few. Send us a user script in the channel and we'll help you to crack it. It should look like user.script name. And he provides us with a script for the Halperion help desk, which is gonna provide us some of those usernames that we can start cracking. Now, I actually think this is a good place to wrap up this first episode. Um, before I do, there is quite a bit of like story that was kind of revealed right there. Right, the, the things I had mentioned earlier on, uh, that we're an AI construct, the trust is this sort of supreme AI uh, that is keeping us from getting outside to the rest of the world. And we need to, as little up and coming AIs, Angie, Bo, Che, and myself, are looking to arm ourselves uh, and upgrade ourselves to the point that we can break out of the VLAN or the virtual local area network uh, the VLAN that we're currently on and stuck on. We don't have any network access outside of our local network right now. And so we're wanting to break out of that. Once we start digging into the Halperian help desk, um, a lot more of like the hacking stuff is gonna get introduced, but I'm just gonna move that into its own separate episode and keep things kind of uh, clearly structured for everybody so that it's easier to maybe follow along and not have to absorb too much. Um, I'm probably gonna keep playing this and likely put up another episode of this just later on today because I'll likely have several episodes of it stored up by the time the game comes out. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If this looks interesting to you, or if you're still on the fence, you know, watch the next episode. But if this looks interesting to you, you could go pick the game up on Steam by the time you're watching this, uh, as it should have just come out today. Uh, if you did enjoy it, feel free to subscribe. There's lots more on the channel. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other videos, and I will catch you guys next time.